This tutorial will show you how to create a set of 2D construction drawings from your 3D CAD. This is a very important step because it gives you the dimensions to build the bike in real life. Without the 2D drawings, you will just have a fancy 3D model of your frame. Before we begin, I want to show you a quick demo of how powerful this workflow can be. Here you can see my construction drawings that contain all the details to make the bike. The tube lengths, the miter angles, the tube offsets, and the bend angles. Even down here, I created a boss callout diagram and a geometry chart that's linked to the frame. Now let's say I want to make a smaller bike. So I can go back to my 3D model, and this is a slightly advanced version of my earlier tutorial. One of the changes I made is I added a parameter table for the tube diameters. So let's say I want to make a small frame and I wanted to shrink the tubes so the bike was lighter and less stiff. I can change the top tube to 28 millimeters, the down tube to 35. And as I enter these numbers, you can see the model updating with the skinnier tubes. I'll click OK. And now let's mess with the geometry. So I'll go to the base sketch, edit the sketch, and let's pull in the reach to 400 millimeters, shrink the head tube, shrink the fork to 100 millimeters, and pull in the chain stay, and shrink the seat tube. So if I hit OK, the model automatically updates. One cool thing you can see is that the down tube actually moved itself up to clear the fork crown. And the reason why I did this automatically is in my centerline sketch, I actually called out a fork, fork crown clearance reference sketch. And so now the down tube location is driven by fork crown clearance. So if I save this model, and then I go back to my 2D model, and I update it, you can see all these construction drawings updated automatically. I now have new tube lengths, new miter angles, new offsets, as well as the geometry chart and the boss diagram updating. So once you've spent, invested the time up front to design a detailed 3D model and 2D construction drawing, essentially you have created this parameterized model of this frame and you can make infinitely many designs and the corresponding 2D construction drawings very quickly. So I hope you find this tutorial useful and let's begin. To convert the 3D drawings to the 2D drawings, you're going to need a reference sketch to pull dimensions off of. There's many different ways to do this, and normally it's an iterative process. You'll realize you're missing a dimension or you want a new dimension, so you need to create a new reference sketch for it. So let's just get started and show you. So we'll create sketch, click the center plane, and first we're going to try to pull the center lines from our other sketches. So we're going to reveal our center line sketch and then highlight all the ones that we care about. And then hit P for project, click OK. And now if we toggle the centerline sketch off, you'll see that we have those sketches on our new reference sketch. Next, we're gonna grab the angle geometry so we'll come into the base sketch, reveal it, and then select the fork axle of the crown, this little angle uh, reference, and same with the C tube angle reference. And we're gonna hit P for project, and click OK. And now we have all those lines on our reference sketch. The next thing that we want are these little intersection points where the miters start. And so how we're going to get that is by projecting the intersection. So if we go to create, project include, intersect, and then we can select the top tube, 
the down tube, the seat tube, and the head tube, and click OK. And now you see this little point uh, appears in the corner of this miter, so we can reference that later. And finally, the other dimension I like to pull is the tangent line dimension. So we'll create two lines right here, and we'll constrain this line to the bottom bracket, this line to the bottom bracket. Uh, you can see, actually, we didn't project the bottom bracket, but uh, because we pulled the tangent constraint to the bottom bracket, it projected that line for us. And make this one perpendicular, perpendicular. And then we'll use the coincident constraint and snap these lines to the tube. So now you have a point of tangency to work off of this bottom bracket miter. Zoom out and finish sketch. Oh, and this is a good opportunity to come over here and name this DWG sketch and hit save. Now that we have a reference sketch to pull dimensions off of, we can create a 2D drawing. So we'll go to File, New Drawing, From Design. I'm going to select ASME Standard and select the largest sheet size possible and click OK. Now I'm going to create the right plane, select it, hit OK. So you see, we don't have too many dimensions to pull off of with just the 3D geometry. And so that's why we created the reference sketch. So if I go to the tree on the left, reveal my sketches, expand this, and reveal my DWG sketch. Now you see we have a lot more references to pull off of. So I'm going to start by creating the jig setup. Just really quick, after I rewatched the video, I realized that I'm using a lot of hotkeys for the dimensions. I'm actually just hitting D for dimension. And let me show you how you do it without hitting the hotkey. If you go up to the dimensions menu and hit dimension, this is automatically a smart dimension. So for example, if I wanted to click this point to this point, I could have the actual distance between the points, or if I drag it a little bit, it'll snap to the horizontal distance. If I drag it to the left, it'll snap to the vertical distance. And again, I could either access this by hitting dimension or hitting D on my keyboard. So for example, if I hit D, I can have access to this smart dimension. The other thing I want to show you is sometimes if I hit D and I select this dropout, I'll get the radius dimension, which isn't what I want. I want the diameter. So if I go down to dimensions and I can click diameter dimension, and I could force it to be a diameter. Cool. Let's continue. Big setup. So if I select the distance, the horizontal distance to the dropout, vertical distance to the dropout, horizontal distance to the head tube, horizontal distance or vertical distance to the head tube, head tube angle and the seat tube angle. This dimension is kind of annoying to get because sometimes this line gets in the way. So I'm going to delete it, dimension that, and then I'm going to redo this dimension right here. So that should be enough to set up the jig. And now we can start doing the dimensions for the miters. So we're going to start by dimensioning the notch to notch distances. So select here, select here, select here. And typically for this dimension, I like to dimension from the notch to this tangent plane, or sorry, this tangent line. Same with the seat tube.
And then what is also useful are the offsets from the edge of the head tube to the tube. So how we can do that in a nice way is we go to detailed view, select it and select the parent view. And we can just draw a circle and it gives you this magnified view of that little cutout and hit okay. And from there I could dimension this distance and this distance, drag this to a nice spot. as well as the angles. And the head tube. Same for the bottom bracket. Select detailed view, select the parent view, draw a circle. Hit OK. And we can dimension the angle between the two tubes and this tube notch distance. I think uh, it will also be useful to have these tube dimensions just as a sanity check. Same with uh, the head tube. And the seat tube. And oh, we need another detailed view. It's like the parent view of this junction right here. Click OK. And this notch distance. And this angle distance. This rough notch distance and this angle distance. And hit escape, let's move this a little bit out of the way. So that should be enough to do the front triangle miters. The seat stay and the chain stay drawings are the hardest part about the 2D drawings. I'm gonna show you the easiest way of doing it. I've found better ways, but they're much more complicated. This looks a little bit messy, but it works. So we're going to start by projecting an auxiliary view. So we'll go up to the left, click auxiliary view, select the seat stay edge or center line. And now you see we have a nice perpendicular view of our bike. Let me move this guy out of the way. So let's select this view again. And there's a couple changes, double click it, and there's a couple changes that we need to make to make it easier to dimension. So first you see that we don't have this line that of the intersection between the seat stay and the dropout. So if we click interference edges, it'll make that appear. And we also don't have the tangent edges of the bends. So if we click tangent edges and click full length, now we have some useful lines to pull dimensions off of. Finally, we can go up to the left to our design tree and see our sketches and reveal our seat stay center. And now we have the center line that we drew earlier. So now we have enough features to pull useful dimensions off of. So let me get started. We'll start with the bend angle, 16 degrees. And then we can pull the edge to edge, edge to bend length edge to bend length, the center line radius, and then the angle of the bend to the dropout, the distance of the dropout to the edge, and maybe this dimension, offset dimension is useful. The seat stays are always tricky even to do in real life. And so you can pull whatever dimensions you need or think you need to actually create the seat stays in a jig or by hand.
Next, we're going to do the chain stay drawings, very similar to seat stays. So we'll go to auxiliary view, select the chain stay plane, project it out here, and we can do the changes earlier. So we'll click full length tangent edges and check the interference edges box and click OK. Now we can move this guy out of the way. And now you see we have a perpendicular view of our chain stays. So if we go to our sketches, reveal the chain stay center line sketch, you'll see our lines appear and we can start dimensioning. So for here, we'll start with the bend angle. It's 11 degrees and we can start with the dropout to chain stay angle this horizontal distance this distance center line radius and we can pull any dimension that is useful to your process so for example maybe we want the distance of the bottom bracket to this notch so we can create a center line select the edge of the bottom bracket and the edge of the bottom bracket and it'll create this center line and then we can dimension from here to this edge or maybe you want this distance or maybe you find this distance useful That's one of the benefits of using Fusion 360 is that you can pull any dimension that you need for your process. And even if it's more difficult to get it from these sketches, you can always go back to your 3D drawing and create new sketches to reference off of. So for example, if I wanted my bottom bracket center line, I could add it here. And it should appear right here. So now you have enough dimensions to actually build a bike from your 3D drawings. I know I missed quite a few dimensions and there might be some that are useful to your process or not, but that's the beauty of fusion is that you can create reference drawings or sketches and pull any dimension that you need for your design. Now we can save this and click save and I can show you something cool and hopefully it doesn't break our drawing if we go back to our original 3d model and let's say we want to make a extra large bike we just go to our base sketch edit sketch and make this a lot bigger 500 million reach 450 chain stay 160 head tube and 480 seat tube and let's steepen this up a little bit and now we finish sketch and you see our 3d model updated with our base sketch if we save this click ok and jump back to our drawing you'll see this little link gives you a warning because we changed our 3D drawing and these 2D drawings have not updated yet. So if we go here, click it, it'll automatically update. And you can see here, now our head tube has changed, our fixture is bigger, our chain stays are longer. And essentially we created one model for infinitely many bikes and you can do as many detailed dimensions as you want and they more or less update with your drawings. Cool. I hope you found this useful.